There's something I've been chasing since I was a kid. Somehow I finish every year no closer from where I started. For the longest time, I've wanted to change that. At the start of last year, I brought a four-wheel drive, leaving a life of comfort and security behind in hopes of finally finding it. Okay, I have to stop and talk because if I keep walking, I'm gonna walk over some frogs. But you might be wondering why I'm out here at 11.30 at night. It sounds like it's going off at the local pub down there. I was thinking, you know what? What better way to start off the year than by climbing a mountain instead of drinking beer? I was like, you know what? Let's climb a mountain. I also just did a late night full body workout, so this is gonna be interesting. Turns out, as I did my midnight hike, I bumped into a couple who had the same idea and they were planning to hike 11 mountains from midnight till whenever they finished. They invited me to join them at least until sunrise the next morning. And I was like, what the hell, let's go. Alrighty guys, we made it at the top for the first sunrise of 2023. I was enjoying the exploration of it all. Just being in a new location and spending time with good people. But to be honest, last year, I kind of felt very disappointed in my attempts to achieve my goals. I didn't really make any progress on anything. So this year, instead of just setting goals, I wanted to take a different approach. Something that actually gives me a better chance at getting to where I wanna be in life. I've devised a step-by-step -step plan in how I'm planning to achieve that for 2023. And I'm gonna share that with you guys right now. So step number one is to identify your vision. Figure out what it is exactly that you want. This is essentially goal setting in a nutshell, is setting your goals, is figuring out the direction you wanna go. But we're just not leaving it there. We're gonna dive a bit deeper into the nuance of how to actually create some kind of routine and system around this vision to then achieve what we set out to. So to do this, I recommend something like the Jordan Peterson uh, Future Authoring Program, which is actually a really cool program that is quite uh, cost effective. It's a bunch of questions that ask you about your life direction in all different areas of your life, your career, your relationships, and all other aspects of your life. And you're writing about what you vision your future to look like. And this helps you figure out what your goals should be. You can articulate your goals from doing this. Or you can try something like a vision board. I also find that they're kind of really helpful. I've used those many years in the past. Just I'm a very visual person, so I like to grab photos and pictures of my dream life that I would like to create and pop that on the vision board, save it as a screensaver for my phone or my laptop, or even create a physical board that you can hang up somewhere in the house as well. But that's the thing, that's kind of like visualizing success is focusing on the vision board. It's not quite the actionable, tangible tasks necessary to get you to accomplishing those goals. You know, manifestation, all that stuff, I kind of believe in. Just like Jim Carrey says, you can't just visualize it and then go eat a sandwich. You got to put in the work. This leads me to cheap dopamine release when it comes to goal setting. It's almost like a false sense of accomplishment. You might have a goal to write a book and you tell all your friends, I'm going to write this book. It's going to be amazing and, you know, I'm going to be an author and all that kind of thing. And in the process of talking about doing something and not actually working towards doing it, you're releasing dopamine. You're tricking your mind into believing that you have accomplished this task when in reality, you haven't taken any steps to get any closer to that goal. And when we keep thinking about what our dream life would look like, we're creating a false sense of reality that isn't actually here in this moment. We essentially live that moment in our minds and feel all the pleasure sensations that may come from getting to that goal without actually achieving it. And we essentially rest on our morals. There was a study that was done using dystolic blood pressure and heart rate. And it showed that people who visualize their dream life, that bottom number on their blood pressure would decrease. And motivation scientists know that dystolic blood pressure is an indicator of our body's readiness to get up and act and take action. It's a measure of our readiness. And that number goes up in your anticipation of doing something, which is why focusing on systems is better for a longer term motivation. When you focus too much on 
your goal or what you want to achieve, you're tricking your mind, like I said earlier, into thinking that it's already achieved it, which means it doesn't have the necessary physiological resources at the ready for you to actually achieve that vision. So it's in our duty then to take this vision from the abstract and to create day-to-day inputs that will make up our systems that we'll do on a daily basis, regardless of whether we feel like we want to do it or not. (laughs) Sometimes that's the tricky part. The great Hindu text touches on this subject eloquently. It kind of describes the process of systems being better than goal setting in a really, really nice way. Introducing the concept of karma yoga, which is the yoga of action and a path of selfless action, providing an alternative perspective on how to live a fulfilling life. Karma yoga teaches us to focus on the process of acting and performing our duty with integrity, detachment and selflessness. Actions are performed without the attachment to the fruits of one's labor or a particular outcome from performing those actions. It's about doing what needs to be done and not for personal gain or any reward, but for the sake of the duty itself by focusing on the process or the system rather than the outcome goal, we ultimately achieve a state of inner freedom and we find true fulfillment and contentment in our lives. This automatically shifts one's perspective to think more about focusing on the process rather than the end destination. But ultimately, step number two is the factors of input. This is what makes up the system that helps us get to such goals. Essentially, discipline beats motivation. When you're focusing on goals, we're always looking for motivation to push us forward. When we're focused on systems, we're in a disciplinary mindset. We're doing something on a daily basis, every day, regardless if we feel like it. It's essentially the identity we've created of someone who just does this thing every single day. I love the idea of the 80-20 rule, finding 20% of the tasks that provide 80% of the results. And implementing that into a system framework can be quite beneficial. These are your daily habits, your non-negotiables. These are the things that you do every day, day in, day out, regardless. Focus on small and consistent wins, and that's the secret to create big and sustainable changes. So lately, I've been surfing quite a lot, and it's probably not the best example because I don't have this grand goal to be like a Mick Fanning pro surfer, but I just want to be more skilled in surfing and I'd love to catch some decently sized waves and be able to just shred them, right? Focusing on the daily getting out and surfing every day and just enjoying being out in the water. It doesn't matter if I get up and catch a wave or not, but rather that I'm getting out and I'm surfing every day if that's my goal. It's also a type of identity shift. Instead of seeing yourself as someone who surfs, you become a surfer. Instead of being someone who makes videos, I become a YouTuber. Let me give you a more in-depth example of what a typical system could look like. So for one of my businesses, I want to make a mid six-figure exit by mid this year. In order for me to do that, I need to grow the brand, like double its sort of traffic and audience. And for me to do that, I have to mainly focus on creating content and content in the form of writing and also videos so I can attract more customers to the brand. So that's my main system is producing or writing a thousand words a day and also just picking up the camera and filming or writing scripts. Essentially focusing on those tasks every day and just doing it but not getting wrapped up in if I've gotten to the amount of traffic that I need to get to for me to reach my goal but rather focusing on the process of just creating content. And this is the next point is to just run the process. We need to create momentum. You have to obviously engage in these inputs that you've set up for yourself. A great starting point I would recommend is to start with just one habit that you want to establish and try and do it for a week for seven days and see if you can do it every day for seven days whether it's reading or whether it's meditating every day or working out every day just try and build a block of seven days in a row and then move on to a month And then after that, you can focus on building other habits as well, because once you achieve a 
a few or just even one habit. It almost comes to a point where you don't want to break the chain and not do that for that day. So you can free up some bandwidth to then start building other habits. Track the habits and develop positive behavioral momentum. I like to accomplish this through using a habit tracker app. I find those are amazing. You list out your habits and each day of accomplishing a habit, you tick the box and you get like a tiny little dopamine release, which sort of gets you addicted to want to continue to keep ticking those boxes for the next days ahead. It's almost turning habit acquisition into a game and turning life into a game. Next is to assess and iterate. You might be working out every day like I have been for the last few months and you sort of maybe get sick of the workout routine. You're doing the same routine over and over again. I think it's also important that we mix up our systems from time to time. For example, one of my goals is to get shredded, <laughs> which I'm far off. <laughs> but I've been following the same routine, the same workout for such a long time, like almost two months now. I feel like I'm getting sick of it. And I was like, you know what? Maybe I should start doing a bit of yoga and start practicing a bit more calisthenics as well. Sort of just changing up the routine. And it just helps rejuvenate the system and make it a bit more fun to engage in, I think. If you're setting goals, this is where one of the biggest flaws of goals lie, is if you have a huge goal you want to achieve and you're focused directly on that goal, you can't really change it to accommodate the most common law of the universe, which is change. Things change, you change, and your direction towards a goal may pivot and change as you move and progress. That's what I love about systems is you're able to iterate and change with those natural ebbs and flows of life as you progress. So if something isn't working, this is time for you to take a step back and assess your system and make adjustments. So following systems will naturally make you fall in love with the journey and the process rather than being fixated on the end goal as you crave this momentary happiness that you may never actually achieve or get to. With goals, we can often get trapped in to the idea of I'll only be happy once I achieve this goal. Focusing on systems and the journey, we learn to be happy when our systems are in motion, which is a majority of the duration of the whole process. Rather than being miserable the whole bloody time, leading up to the goal and then having that little momentary bliss and happiness as we achieve something to then later be left desiring something else and falling back into that trap of unhappiness. There's something to this deep satisfaction that you get to accomplishing your daily tasks and ticking everything off that list of what you set out to achieve for the day. And like I said earlier, as you follow systems, you're more naturally prone to think of habit acquisition as a game and it makes it fun. Setting systems makes the mundane tasks of life actually feel quite fulfilling. And as cliche as it sounds, focusing on the journey rather than the destination is where it's at.